with us here on Market Guru. Joining us uh, today, Jyoti Vardhan Jaipuria, MD and Head of Research Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Jyoti, thanks for being with us uh, today. To start off with, uh, what are you making of the markets currently, considering, of course, that a huge uh, part of the pre-election rally is now behind us? Just one more phase really left. We've just got about a week to go before we see those results. Yeah, so you know the easiest phase in the elections is always the pre-election phase because we typically get a rally. So you know, if you buy six months before election results and you sell the day before election results, you made an average 15% if you take the last seven elections. In most of those elections, you would have got a positive return. It's five out of seven times that you got a positive return. So you know, that was the easy phase. Now we get into the tough phase next week because results start coming and that normally has been a phase which has been very uncertain. The last two times we know that the results were not in line with what the consensus was expecting. This time as we go into elections, there's actually again a very broad consensus around, you know, we will get close to a stable government and that's, you know, what everyone has to hope will play out. Mm. Uh, Jodi, I remember you've been writing about this and I was reading a few reports uh, on the way the high voter turnouts are actually getting markets somewhat excited. What, what are your observations in this context? Yeah, so you know, if we look at voter turnout and we of course have one phase still to go, so we don't know. But my guess is this election will be the highest voter turnout we've ever had in Indian election history. The previous high was in the 1984 elections when, you know, Rajiv Gandhi had got a, elected post the assassination of Indira Gandhi, that time the voter turnout was 64%. And my senses will beat that voter turnout this time. Now, you know, there are three things on whether voter turnout helps you predict, you know, what the trend is. One is in the past where we've had a very high voter turnout of over 60%, it's typically led to a change in government, except for the time when, you know, Rajiv Gandhi got elected when there was a very emotive issue on which people came out to vote. So, you know, there's one fact is high voter turnout is normally accompanied by people having some objective in mind. They come out and they feel very strongly about one government. The second is, you know, part of this is allayed by the fact that in general, we've had voter turnout, which has been increasing. So, you know, part, it has to do with more, you know, education by the election commissioner, by, you know, law and order getting much better so people don't, you know, feel afraid to come out to vote. So, in general, the trend we've seen is voter turnout has kept going up. So, there's a secular trend of voter turnout, which we have to balance with this high turnout this time. Lastly, you know, people may feel very strongly about some government, but again, it could get localized. So, maybe, you know, in some state, people come out in large numbers to vote for the state government at that time. So whether in an overall election it translates into some big trend in the overall scenario, we have to wait and watch. But I think you know the market has taken a cue that high voter turnout means that you know we're going to get a change in government, we're going to create a very strong government which comes at the center. Since you're on the topic of elections, Jyoti, what are some of the likely scenarios that you're working with currently? And also the most probable one according to you? Yeah, so, you know, we're not great political analysts, so we go by the opinion polls, which all of you all put out. And, you know, if you look at the opinion polls, it shows that BJP is the front runner to form the government. Like the NDA coalition, I think a lot of the last opinion polls which came before the election started were in the range of 240 to 270 for the NDA. Now, that would be a very positive outcome for the market because then it means that you get a very stable government. Even if we fall a bit short by 10, 20 seats, I think the market will not be that perturbed by it. It may not be the most positive outcome they want. But I think even if we end up at, let's say, 235, I think at some point market will brush it off as long as we get a stable government getting formed. What we've seen in the last two elections has been like things have been totally different. So if we rewind 10 years ago, you know, everyone expected the BJP government to come. And at that time, we got... Uh, UPA government which came in the market like really took a tumble in the first two days when the election results came out. Of course, the initial reaction of the market was wrong because after that over the next five years we got a great uh, rain coming in terms of stock market performance as well as great economic performance. Again in 2009 people expected on parliament we got Congress with got over 200 seats and markets immediately fled up on that. We got a near 20% jump on day one after the election results came out. 
So, you know, it will be very choppy depending on where things go. I think if, you know, the results come in more or less in line with market expectation, we won't have that big 20% move we've had in 2004 and 2009. It probably will be a mild up move in the market. Jyoti, now, how critical will it uh, actually be in terms of the developments for the macros? Because going forward from here, that's really going to be the key crucial part. I mean, you've got uh, elections on one side, which is the near-term uh, talking point and the trigger point. But as far as the markets are concerned, the economy also needs to start participating and giving that uh, bit of support to the kind of cheer that we've already seen. Your thoughts on this? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, you know, elections per se don't really matter so much. Like, if you map out the history over the last, you know, since independence, and you look at, you know, various political combinations which we have had, and what has been the stock market performance in their tenure, what has been, you know, the economic performance in their tenure, there's actually no great link between any party and any coalition or the stable government and the subsequent macro performance. For the market, what is important is the economy and earnings. So that's the only thing which matters. The reason people care for elections is what they hope is that once we have elections out of the way, we have a new government which has come in, it will be able to do reforms much faster than what you know a government could do in the fifth year of its tenure. So that's the reason what people are hoping is that whatever government we get, will it be in a position to do reforms, accelerate reforms at this stage, which is necessary to boost the economy. So that's where the focus will shift. There have been a few positives, like, you know, the markets have gone up partly because of the election rally, which we have always. But there's also been, like, a lot of emphasis on some of the things which have improved in the economy. For example, current account deficit from, you know, being 5% of GDP is now under 2% of GDP. That was a big change that led to the rupee stabilizing. So that was one thing which everybody was very excited about. Like, if you think of the fragile five of last year, India's probably had the best performance in terms of uh, improvement in the current account deficit. The other thing which helped was inflation, which, you know, has come down, it's at a three-year low. So it's, you know, inflation, current account deficit, the fisc not being that bad, earnings starting to see upgrades. So those are things which have helped the market also, and that is what will be the focus over the next one year for the market anyway, once, you know, the election results are out.